Everyone who grows up in the quote-unquote civilized world comes to notice at some point during their childhood that modern humans are very different from other life forms on Earth. What most distinguishes us from other species is our culture, which is entirely symbolically mediated. Where did our culture come from? It came from memes. A meme is to culture what a gene is to hereditary. Memes are the ideas which make up a culture. Where did our memes come from? Memes arise as a result of the brain's ability to imitate something else. Put another way, a meme is a symbol of that which it attempts to represent. Therefore we could say, memes generate a simulated reality. As human cognitive ability increased, it led to the development of proto-language, whereby symbolic interchanges began to form a syntax of communication which facilitated a level of social organisation beyond that of other species. At the same point, during the development of language and increasing social complexity, the sense of self emerged, a level of recursion which allowed the left hemisphere of the brain to realise that it is self-aware. Since reaching that defining historical moment, we have externalised our evolution more and more towards memetics by creating culture and technology. The important thing to realise then, is that we are all enveloped within narratives, by which I mean the ideas we have about ourselves and the world. Memes are what are shaping us individually and collectively. Reality is really a game of ideas of what reality actually is. Of course this story I have just told you also invites religious and conspiratorial commentary. Those who realise the power of the word may command language so as to gain power over others. The Gnostics, for example, might consider memes to be an arcanic ploy to destroy humanity. Indeed, a lot of Gnostic material finds its way into conspiracy theories, and that is no coincidence. For the sake of simplicity, the Archons might be considered as demons without a soul. Some even describe them as a machine-like species that can imitate but not create. Furthermore, the Archons were said to be a species residing as much within our mind as without it. To fully appreciate how this plays out within society, it is necessary to look at the schism within the hemispheres of the brain. Every person should have two hemispheres within their brain, a left and a right, both having different ways of perceiving the world. Stereotypically, the left is considered more masculine and the right is considered more feminine. The two sides could also be described as conscious ego and unconscious id. Gestation reflects the evolutionary development of human beings, the left hemisphere of the brain being the newer sibling. In utero, the right hemisphere of the brain develops much sooner than the left hemisphere. The left hemisphere is often the dominant hemisphere in most people, perhaps most obviously represented with the predominant tendency towards right-handedness in society. The left hemisphere controls the right side of the body and vice versa. Therefore, most people's language centers are within the left hemisphere of the brain. The right hemisphere of the brain is grounded in the somatic, in the felt experience of the now. It specializes in non-verbal communication and is able to perceive reality without symbolic interference. Fundamentally, the ego and language are intimately related. Going back to Gnosticism, if we consider memes as the archons, then the ego could be considered the demiurge, i.e. Satan. Language is the ego's way of telling a story to itself, to perpetuate and validate its own existence. In some Zen traditions, a monk or nun may remove all personal pronouns in order to diminish their sense of self. For example, if they are hungry, they might say, there is hunger here, rather than, I am hungry. Once one can see that language is the tool of the ego, one can see how this plays out in society. The ego is in a power struggle to maintain its separate identity and avoid its dissolution. The ascent of the individual ego is reflected in society by the paternal ego, what could be broadly called the establishment. It seeks to further its mimetic influence above and beyond that of others. Consequently, people who point the finger at individuals have lost sight of the unfolding psychological process that is as much a part of themselves as it is those who they blame. Do not think that people are in control. Memes are. Reality is manipulated by the creation of culture and subversion of aesthetic values. So long as people are going around playing other people's language games, then they will forever remain in the dark. As a trivial example, both quote-unquote Illuminati and quote-unquote conspiracy are contrived and therefore misunderstood terms. Yet ironically, the more the establishment seeks to further its agenda, the more awareness it brings upon itself. One cannot create order without creating chaos. Where then is this process going? It continues towards infinite recursion. No one knows what the universe is. Anything we say about it encloses the mystery within yet another narrative. 
Language is what is evolving on this planet. Consider that the most complex thing the universe could create is the universe. Put another way, the most complex thing the universe could simulate is the universe. Thus we arrive at a hologram of information. Memes are the engine of information. They seek to create ever more layers of recursion within conscious experience. The psyche is evolving towards a simulated reality, if indeed it is not already in one. What is life but a simulated reality? What is a dream but a simulated reality? As we collectively enter into the next fractal loop, perhaps the most valuable skill during the quote-unquote new simulation age is the ability to realize what is being simulated. Simulated reality is entirely to be expected in a logocentric society which has given its guiding force to the left hemisphere of the brain. It epitomizes the final ascent and metamorphose of the logos. The ego wishes to live forever and the only way it may do so is within its own dream. How do you change the world? You change your language, else you will become your language.